Hey, it's Yomi here. So today I wanted to film my disappointing reads of 2018 and what better day to, this, to film them than today. Because even though I might look happy, I am far, far from it. I'm so disappointed in myself for two specific reasons. One is the shirt that I'm wearing today. I still haven't been able to go watch Deadpool and I want to avoid spoilers and I do know they're not going to remove it from the movie theaters next week. But I really... I really don't want anybody to spoil it for me because I, I really did enjoy the first movie. I was even watching it on Friday because I wanted to, you know, to remember certain specific details even though I've seen it like a gazillion times. But it's a movie that I really did enjoy and I wanted, I want to see the second one so badly because like we didn't know we were going to get, you know, a new one. But whatever, I'll eventually see it. And the second reason that I'm so disappointed in myself is because... I mixed up certain specific days, and I thought the Comic-Con here in Puerto Rico was going to be next week, but it's today, or was, is going to be eventually ended by now, but whatever. Um, also, yesterday was Comic-Con, but I had an activity yesterday where I couldn't go, I couldn't make it to Comic-Con, but I wanted to make it today, but unfortunately I couldn't. But, you know, that's life. I'm so disappointed in myself, and I thought what better day to film this than today, because I'm like... Why do you have a calendar? Honestly, I have a calendar and I write my activities. I write everything that I'm going to do. And I somehow just forgot to write Comic-Con. And then I, when I was... Because I, I, here I thought Comic-Con was going to be next week. That's why next week I have completely free. But now it was this week. So, yeah. I'm salty. I'm bitter. But, you know, let's get into this video. Because I have a lot of books to speak about so far. Because I have already disappointing reads of 2018 I already have seven disappointing reads I think I might have more disappointing reads this year than I did last year but you know many of these are audiobooks so I won't be able to show them to you because I'm filming in my on my phone I'm also filming like right here sitting down on the floor like right next to my bookshelves I'm also gonna be showing you my bookshelves and my movie shows because like the best of both worlds but you know I, when I was filming on you know on my desk I noticed that the last video was a little bit dark so I was like let me sit here on the floor so it might be a little wonky. I still have to like figure out how to make it like completely straight. And I might be all over the place with this video. But you know what? This is take two. Because I apparently was so disappointed in myself that I kept on saying 2017 in my previous video. So let's just get into my disappointing reads of 2018 so far. So the first read of 2018 is my first disappointing one. So I start the year really wrong, but it's Deathly Hollows. I gave this three out of five stars. I have a love-hate relationship when it comes to this series, and I, and it's okay. You know, I've noticed this is the what this is the book I've read for the first time ever. So I have a lot of things to say. Unfortunately, a lot of things are negative, and you know, hey, it's okay for us to like different things. That's why I didn't do a disclaimer because like. You know, everybody likes things differently and just because I loved the book, I didn't like it, I was disappointed by it, doesn't mean that you're also going to be like that. You know, differences of opinions is what makes this world tick. You know, we're, we're all going to like things differently, we're all going to visualize things differently. But Deathly Hollows for me was not a great read. Um, I was really disappointed by the finale because this is our wrap up and yet I, I, I was so pissed off. Just for lack of a better word, I was so pissed off for it by it because I was really infuriated with certain things. And no, I'm not infuriated because of the deaths. I'm just infuriated by the fact that you know that this is going to be a different book. That's the first thing that I'm going to tell you. You do know that, you know, it starts off really intense and you know that you're going to have deaths in this book because, you know, this is the finale. This is where it wraps up. Shit is going to go down. People are going to die. That's something that we have to expect. That's something that I'm okay with. Okay? And the beginning, you know it's going to be intense. That's how it was. I was crying. I was like, <laughs> why is this happening to me? I was even texting my friend like, you're going to kill me in this book. Then the middle happens. And the middle just completely slows down. I didn't like the pace. I, 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 I thought it dragged so much. I could have cared less for some subplots that were introduced. I think that the concept of the Deathly Hollows being explained was something that was really intriguing and something that I really enjoyed. Just like everything else, like the Golden Trio traversing through the woods, trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. It was just really annoying. Like convenience on their part was something that was also, like me, it had me constantly like rolling my eyes. And even though sometimes I'm okay with things, you know, being convenient for the main characters. And this one... I, I didn't agree with it because, you know, they've been through so much. Like, they've been through so much that, damn it, they, they already have to be, like, a little bit more intense, like, and, and know that, you know, shit is going to go down. We have to defend ourselves. We have to learn a little bit more. We have to, you know, look for further information for people that know more than just us because we're kids. Sometimes we don't know everything. And yet when we have people that were willing to help them, it's like Harry just brushed them off. And I was like, what? 
also the golden trio really it got on my nerves in this book especially harry harry is one that i know that and i'm gonna continue saying this i hate him i don't like him yes people don't bring pitchforks in front of my house or tie a noose over my head because i just harry isn't my favorite character in this series and i do know that you know obviously this is told through his point of view but i could care less for him he was so rude and so arrogant and so selfish in this one it was so much that it was just like bordering on the fact that i was like you know what I'm gonna DNF this book and I had plenty of times where I wanted to DNF it but I already had committed so much that I was like no but Ron was selfish but no Ron but Ron was childish that's the word I was looking for I confused him he was childish he was acting extremely childish I read it, yeah I said it like three times because he was like really childish and he was rude and I hate I hate when he's rude to Hermione both him and Ron they were both rude to Hermione also Hermione crying a lot she constantly had me rolling my eyes but like when they achieve um the dragon I thought that was really interesting there were very interesting concepts in this book um some that I could have cared less I, I like I said I get that this is told in Harry point in Harry's point of view but I would have loved this book to have been divided into three separate sections because I wanted to see the array of everything that was happening I wanted to see what was happening in the wizarding world and this includes the death eaters and this includes the order of the phoenix we have people that are giving their lives for Harry and we could have gotten a little bit from them instead of getting bits and pieces of information that was just woven into the story as you know a side fact um, I would have loved to see what was happening in Hogwarts, how we've been given Hogwarts in the entire books, and here we only get it in a fraction of it, but I would have loved to know what was happening there, because hell, in a, in a, in a previous book we had Dumbledore's army, we have characters that are willing to stand up for Harry's cause, that are willing to fight Voldemort, and yet we didn't get much from Hogwarts until the end, and this is something that I wanted, I wanted so much, and then we could have gotten the Golden Trio traversing through wherever the hell they wanted to go to, in order to get all the Horcruxes. I, yes, I wanted to see everything. That's why, like, my disappointment is because of that. Because, again, I wanted to see all these different arrays. And, you know, I get it. I do get it. But, like, this is the finale. I want to see everything that's, you know, evolving or, or happening throughout the entire Wizarding World. Because every concept was so interesting. And, you know, like I've said, people are giving everything for this cause. Like, just, you know, make it memorable. Make this book memorable for me. And it really wasn't. Um, like I said, I don't care about certain characters dying because, you know, it's gonna happen. You know, we have the final battle. But I just... You could have given me a page and a half to see how was it that these people met their demise. Because, like I've said, I think a gazillion times already, these people are giving their all for this cause. And yet you couldn't give me a page and a half where you told me how was it that they met their death. And yet, they've given everything, and I mean everything for this cause, that they even left their children without parents. And yet, you couldn't give me that one specific moment where they lost it all. It was just like, that was something that was really infuriating for me. There were also character um, situations that were happening that was very questionable, and I was like, if you would have told me somebody else did that, then I would have believed it. But you telling me that he did it? I honestly don't believe it. I thought that the wand lore was very contradictory because it tells you one thing then all of a sudden it just mentions something else. I already said that the Deathly Hallows was something that was very interesting. I enjoyed how they achieved all the horcruxes. That final battle, battle between Harry and Voldemort was so disappointing. It was underwhelming and you know I would have loved for something different to happen but you know like I've said I'm not gonna say too too much because again I do know that this is loved by many people but I I don't I fall under the unpopular opinions when it comes to this. It was it was an okay read, just not a great read. And Neville. Neville's always gonna be my favorite character. And Molly. I have to love Molly for everything that she did. She was so beautiful, intriguing, and I love that part where she said, I'm not gonna say it because I hope that part is in the movie because I really don't I don't remember anything from the movies. But this it was okay. The next book that I'm going to mention is an audiobook that I heard and I wanted to give this series another shot because, you know, I w I've, I've been invested, I've read four books and a novella and I was like, Tower of Dawn, okay, you know, let me give it a shot. It's Kale's point of view, okay, let's read Kale's point of view, I apologize for moving it, but it, it wasn't, it was also Irene's and Nesrin's point of views and I have a lot of things to say, I have a lot of things to say on this series, like so much, but I'm not going to say everything just because... 
we'd, we'd have a 50 minute video but i thought this this was a 600 and plus odd book it was completely filled with fillers um it could have been 300 maybe less maybe some specific factors could have been taken out that were really important like placed in empire of storms i haven't read empire of storms nor do i have any interest in continuing but like kale was at times he was very insufferable he was infuriating because like he would contradict himself also a lot like he would say one thing and then set out for another and i'm like you're in a specific situation and yet you say that you're okay by the situation that you're in but yet you want to change it so also the audiobook re really wasn't that great you know i gave it two out of five stars um i have to admit that i hate the love to hate relationship i also don't like why does every female character have to have of male character to end up with why can't we just have platonic loves why can't we just have two people that are not romantically um involved in one another that they're just friends they just want to speak with another they just want to hug in a in, 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 in an okay sort of way you know instead of you know blushing or <laughs> i have feelings for him i love him <laughs> why can't we just have platonic loves it exists nowadays it's something that happens a male and a female can be friends. They don't necessarily have to be romantically in love with one another in order to speak or have a conversation with one another. It's just, you know, life, you know, life happens. I just, I was, like I said, um, the Rook were very intriguing. I really did enjoy those aspects when they were introduced. I thought that Nesrin had some really intriguing moments from her point of view. Irene, I could have cared less about her point of views. I liked it more when she was included with Kale's point of views there it was okay but i really didn't like her at times because she was also rude she also contradicted herself because it's like she would have an advancement in character development only to degrade on that and it was like wait like didn't you just evolve a bit why are you gonna go back on your words it also happened with kale like i just said and whatever i fangirled i have to admit i fangirled for certain specific people because i liked them together i was okay with them together but you know again like i said it was fillers there were things that I really could have cared less. The, t the testosterone levels could have been, you know, turned down a notch because it were like way up here, you know. Also, the aspects of, you know, falling in love with another person. Like, I loved you before I even knew I loved you. Or I loved you since the moment I saw you or I laid eyes upon you. Like, I, had, I honestly was rolling my eyes constantly. But, you know, it is what it is. I can't continue hating on the series but you know just in case if you're gonna go into tower of dawn thinking it is only kale's point of view no you do have nezrin and you also have irene's and nezrin's points of view like i said are very intriguing um the next book that i read was talon <clears throat> well not read i dnf this book by julie kagawana i dnf this book at page 204 i thought that the concept of having shape-shifting dragons was really intriguing and that you have a society that's hunting them down trying to kill them i thought that that was something that was fascinating but just the main character her alone was annoying i couldn't continue reading about her and again she was also a character that contradicted herself because you know she would say one thing and she would act one way and then all of a sudden when this rebel was introduced she would completely like change or shift in, in opinions and thoughts and it was something that i was like no i mean i get it you're a teen you're constantly trying you know to figure out yourself in life and you know but, but i could have cared less honestly i really enjoyed her brother i thought that her twin bro brother was really intriguing and if we would have had more points of views on him i would have loved this book a lot more and i probably wouldn't have dnf'd it but i just i really couldn't we also have i think like i think i know what might happen between two specific people they might eventually fall in love because again we have one that's a shape-shifting dragon one a, a man from the army that's you know supposed to kill these dragons i think he's going to be your love interest again i said i think it might turn off differently i don't know but i just i lost interest in it and it was disappointing because i was expecting a lot and it fell flat so i i had to dnf it the next one that I picked up in audio format was Shatter Me. I gave that two out of five stars. I'm not going to continue Shatter Me because I, or the Shatter Me series because I wanted to read it just because I wanted to know who was Warner. And I was like, wow, people fangirl over Warner and people love him and I want to know why people love him. Maybe I'm going to fall in love with him. No. No, I hated Warner. I could care less for Warner. He was a character that I didn't enjoy. The man is completely sadistic. The man is demented. He has a lot of issues. He has a lot of problems. And I I didn't love... I didn't like Julia. I mean, I get that, you know, she might have character development. She was such a weak 
character like so freaking much and I heard the audiobook and I was a little bit confused because you hear like the scratching motion and I think like obviously like you know she was writing and then she was scratching things off but I uh, that that pen has been bewitched by a wizard because it was endless I was like doesn't her pen ever run out like okay this is me like overthinking things but like like the concept of shatter me I, I just could have cared less for the characters. I thought that there were side characters that were more intriguing than the main characters. And like I said, Julia was such a weak character. I hated Warner. Adam was one that I really did enjoy. I also um, really liked James. There was also another one that I can't remember his, his name because they weren't memorable characters. And I'm going to say why I hated Shatter Me. And I'm going to spoil it, so I apologize. But I just, I just have, to, I have to rant this moment because I need to vent these problems that I'm having with this specific book I just want to say it because like there's a moment where Warner is forcing himself upon Juliet and she hates it she doesn't like it she 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 feels disgusted by it and obviously survival instincts kick in and she says that she wants to lead him on perfect I, I don't have a problem with that survival instincts kick in you want to save yourself fine but then you say that there's a moment that you say that you have a connection with him and then you're gonna then you're gonna again really fast say no I have to remind myself this is disgusting that I hate him that this is just completely wrong that he's making me feel you know um making me feel so many things and I'm like no 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 woman in her right mind would ever say such a thing especially when she's being forced upon well no room no woman in her right mind would say something like that and like I said I understand survival instincts, but this was just a little bit too much and I couldn't. That was the one moment where I said, I'm not going to continue this series because I just can't stand what he did. And I also, I applaud what she did to him. And I would have been intrigued to like, to see what else happens to these characters. But I know that these two are going to end up together. I just know it. it, it it's what I call the kale effect. Like when you have one character, it's like, like the okay kind of love interest for the main character. Then you try to introduce this demented ass kind of character just weird persona in general and you just want to put these two together because people are gonna s just you know love it they're gonna swoon over it and i was just like no there's nothing in me that's going to root for these two characters and there's nothing in me that wants them together so let's just say that i could have cared less for them and i'm not going to continue the series because of that i i just don't agree with it and I really didn't care for it, let's just say that I didn't care for any of the characters and even though I thought that some things were intriguing, like I want to know why is it that, you know, she has these, you know, powers because she can't be touched by anybody except to a specific person or people, whatever. But anyways, the next book that I read, I'm bitter, right? People, I, I know I'm bitter, it's just that that book, like, you know, really took out a lot of me. But the next one that I'm going to say is Upside Down. It's, what is this? It was right. Why am I? I can't even see right now. City of Bones. Me, myself, and I will always give City of Bones five out of five stars because I have a personal connection with this book and I just love this book and I loved everything about it. It took me out of a huge reading slump. Me being able to criticize it openly, I will give it three out of five stars. Me hearing the audiobook, I give it two out of five stars. The audiobook is insufferable. Do not, and when I say do not, hear the audiobook when you're going into this book because it's just you're gonna have a really bad experience just read it read it you're gonna get an even bad experience or even a worse experience what i don't even know how to speak right now you're gonna get even a worse experience but like i love this book like me having a personal connection like i said i love it i love everything about it i love the shadow hunter world and you know one of the many things why okay i'm gonna criticize it openly like Clary annoys the crap out of me. She's so annoying. Like, she infuriates me a lot. And I was like, woman, you don't know anything about the shadow hunting world, but yet you just want to thrust yourself into situations that you have no idea how to handle. And it's just like, mm. Then, I can't say anything bad about Jace because I love his arrogance. He's just, he's a sweetie. And then, you know, what happened to him? He has a lot of things happening in his life. I just love him. Isabel is a character that I learned that she's she can be a bit stupid and annoying also also like i mean i get it that she was drunk because i get it but there's a moment where we have isabel who's a shadow hunter yes like i said she was drunk whatever but yet clary overpowered her she isabel is a 
freaking shadow hunter. Let go of me, why don't you let go of me? I'm reenacting the moment just in case you're wondering. I'm like, you're a shadow hunter. Like, can't you like, what? I was like, again, me overthinking things, but yet, you know, she has more powers than a regular human being, and yet she could, she was overpowered by Clary. <sighs> there were also a lot of other things, but eventually I'll make a review. Um, and I'll update my Goodreads because, like, I, I need to point those things out. The next one that I heard the audiobook, um, more happy than not, I gave it two out of five stars. Why did I think this was going to be a happy read? I have no idea. But I didn't connect with any of the characters. I didn't like the concept of it, you know? Shit happens in life. That's the way it is. You want to erase some things just because you don't like that people think that you're gay and you want to erase that from your mind because you don't want to be that way anymore. It was just like, it was wrong. I, I didn't agree with it and I was like, okay, I get that people deal with things differently. I get that. But like, damn, there, it wasn't an enjoyable book. Let's just say that. I didn't connect with the character. I, I could have cared less about anything that was happening to them. I don't remember any of their names. That, that It wasn't memorable. It wasn't something that I sat and heard and enjoyed. It just wasn't. And I was just, I was, I apologize if you heard that. That was my mother. It's, um. Her mirror, fell her mirror fell because of the wind. But uh, I didn't really enjoy that book. And that's why I gave it 2 out of 5 stars. Um, characters were memorable. The pace was just boring. And I didn't agree with a lot of things that were dealt with in that book. Also, there is, you know, a lot of things happening in that book. And trigger warnings for, um, you know, a, 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 you know, attempted hurt. You know, even a, a attempted suicide. There are a lot of things that are happening in that book. You know, that were just like, wow, this is... It's a lot to take in, you know? And the final book that I'm going to mention is What Happened to Goodbye by Sarah Dessen. She is the one that wrote one of my favorite books, and that is The Truth About Forever. I love this book so, so freaking much. And I don't know what happened to What Happened to Goodbye. Um, none of the characters, again, were memorable. I, I loved her f main, the main character's father. I don't even remember the main character. That's how unmemorable these characters were. But I thought that the beginning of it was really... It had a slow start to it. There were things also that I could have cared less. It was introducing a lot of basketball concepts because these are people... Um, like the main character and her father really do love um, basketball. And then something happens where they divorce. You know, her mother and her father divorced because there was a scandal with, in their lives. Also, somebody cheated on somebody. And it's just her getting over, you know, this situation and dealing with it. And even though I... I, I like I said... I get it that people deal with things differently but she was constantly changing her name and shifting from persona so she wasn't content with who she was and she was trying to be this different person but all she had to do was just like sit down and think about certain things and just speak her mind and speak to the, to these people which are her mother and her father what's happening with her and you know eventually you know she could have dealt with the situation differently but it was all right the audiobook was not perfect and that's why I gave it three out of five stars it's just it, it wasn't memorable I could have crappy I could have a crappy plot but you have to give me memorable characters characters that I'm going to root for characters that I'm going to cry over characters that I'm going to love and that's what makes me enjoy uh, a book because I'm very character driven even though I love a plot I do love a good plot don't get me wrong but I love characters that you know evolve throughout the course that you know it learns certain, certain things that you know you you end up loving that's what i love to see in a book and unfortunately a lot of these fell flat for me and some that you know i just really wasn't agreeing with things that were happening but those are all the books that um were disappointing reads for me in 2018 so if you want to tell me which were your disappointing reads so far then feel free we'll chit chat down below but i want to thank you for watching and until next time peace